Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it's Valentine's Day, or at least it is on the day this video was released. I hope you didn't forget. Okay, so we all know that Valentine's Day is the day that we celebrate the Valentine tank. It says it right there in the name. Because this is a Valentine's Day video, this tank has a nice little heart on the turret. How romantic. Anyway, this model is the 28mm scale plastic kit from Rubicon Models, and I do have a build video if you would like to see how this one goes together. The link is in the description. Feel free to go and check it out, we'll wait here for you, but only if you press the pause button. Otherwise I'm just going to keep going and show you how I painted it. The first step is of course priming. I'm sure that makes sense, you don't prime the model after you've painted it. In this case I've used black Steinal res. I then airbrush on the base coat. This is Hataka, if I'm saying that right. Hataka? Hataka? This is Khaki Green number 3. I picked up a couple of Hataka paint sets a while ago because why not? And this colour came from the British AFV set and it's part of their blue line, which is intended for brush painting. I'm airbrushing this anyway because I'm a rebel. It does take a little bit of thinning though. I think it's a pretty nice looking colour. I've no idea if it's really accurate, but it looks good, and that's what matters to me. I spent a bit of time pondering whether or not I should add a disruptive colour, and it turns out I wanted to. So I did. For this I've used Hataka Dark Green number 4 from the same box set. Unsurprisingly it also needed to be thinned for the airbrush. I obviously could have brushed this on, like the paints are intended to be used, but I wanted a soft edge so airbrush it is. I'm not sure if they ever painted Valentines this way, but I like it so I'm doing it. Complaints shall be directed to the void. Because this is a Valentine's Day Valentine, I tried to airbrush a heart on top of the turret. It didn't exactly go how I wanted it to though, so I just pretended it didn't happen. Just a big splotch of camo pattern here, nothing to see. I could have sprayed over it with the base coat or practiced before trying this, but I didn't really care that much, and I've ended up with what I think is a pretty nice looking camo scheme anyway. Time for some highlighting. I didn't airbrush any highlights onto the model like I normally would, but I did dry brush some. For this I made a mix of the Hataka Kaki Green number 3 and Model Air White, about one part white to three parts green. The Hataka paints aren't super thick or anything, but it does work well for dry brushing. The Model Air White is of course thin, being an airbrush paint, but it doesn't thin it out too much. As you can see, I'm dry brushing this all over the model, focusing on edges and raised details, including the darker areas where it's much more obvious. I wasn't sure if I would like how this looked, but I do. It kind of looks like the darker coat isn't quite as strong a paint, for lack of better words, and has just been rubbed off on sharper edges. Also it's a lot easier to do this than trying to dry brush a different colour on the darker areas. Call me lazy, but I just didn't really feel like doing that. You're lazy Herbert! Oh no, somebody called me lazy, Ah. Uh... Then after a coat of gloss varnish, which ruins that nice matte look the Hataka paints have, it's decal time. It's a Valentine's Day Valentine, so I decided to use this heart from a French decal set. This is certainly going to upset some people, probably the same ones who shit their pants over pink panthers and purple pershings and the like. Anyway, I figured the turret was the best place for the heart. I did think I had a decal set with a red heart, which I would have preferred, but I couldn't find it so this is what I went with. Purple is a good colour anyway. The rest of the markings I've used are from the Rubicon sheet that came with the kit. While I did look at some pictures of Valentines for references, I didn't really feel like doing so much research to determine if there was ever a tank with this number in the 23rd Armoured Brigade, which I'm pretty sure is the insignia I've used on the right, with the… is that a stork? It's a bird of some sort, or if they had a Valentine named Hector. I think Hector is a funny name for a tank, so that's what I've used. The name and number do match, at least according to the decal sheet, so there is that. Whining about the markings will also be directed to the void, probably after generating a sensible chuckle for myself. Time for chipping. This is pretty much exactly the same as the chipping I did a couple of weeks ago on the M3 half tracks. Ammo chipping colour on an artist's sponge. Artist's sponge is the fancy way to do this. You think artist's sponge is fancy? Well, no, 
but it is a bit more fancy than just using old model packaging sponge or just your regular washing sponge. So it's relatively fancy because it came in a package that said it's for artists. Ooh. Just about any sponge like this will work though. As usual, I tried to not go overboard with this and I think I was just about on the edge of doing too much of it, at least for what I was intending to do anyway. I follow this with the same colour on a fine brush to apply some scratches and other small bits of chipping. When I do this, I like to try and put a couple of scratches across decals. I feel like doing that sort of helps to blend them in with the rest of the paintwork. I also applied a couple of scratches going down the lower front and rear plates. I figured this might be the result of driving over some debris or something. I thought it might be an interesting idea to paint the shackles with the chipping colour as well. It kind of makes them stand out a bit. They don't jump out at you, but they do stand out a little. I do the tracks next, and for this I'm using Ammo Rusty Tracks. That name is quite appropriate. It's a good rusty looking colour, I'm sure you will agree. This is pretty simple to put on. Just use an appropriately sized brush and wipe it onto the tracks. Don't put it anywhere that isn't tracks. I sensibly use a larger brush for the larger areas and a smaller one to get in and around the wheels. This is most definitely rocket science that nobody has worked out yet. Don't forget to paint the spare track links if your model has any. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Remember when I said not to put this colour anywhere but the tracks? I lied. I apply this to the exhaust as well, because those probably get a bit rusty, why not? I guess it would have been more appropriate to say be careful to only apply the colour where you want it. You can use it on anything you want, not just tracks. Yeah we already knew that Herbert! Did you? I paint the rubber parts on the wheels next, and I'm using Ammo by MIG rubber and tyres here, which when you think about it, makes sense. Obviously I'm being careful here to only put this on the rubber areas, and the raised rim of the wheels does kind of help here. You can use it as a sort of guide. It is okay to make mistakes of course, they can be fixed, but it is always easier to not have to fix them if you do it neatly the first time. It does take a little bit more time to do it carefully because that normally involves slowing down a bit, but I feel like it's worth it. I then did a bit of a highlight around the wheel rims. I'm using a mix of the Hataka Khaki Green and Vallejo Model Color Pastel Green, roughly one part pastel green to three parts khaki. I'm just carefully applying it around all the wheel rims. This is to highlight them a bit and to get them to stand out. It does stand out, actually quite a bit more than I was hoping it would, especially on the darker painted wheels. I wasn't sure how much I liked this while I was doing it, but it did grow on me and I will apply washes later that should darken it down a bit. I then did various touch ups because that's what you do when you make mistakes. In an effort to add a little bit of interest, I take some Vallejo model colour light orange and I sort of stipple it and brush it a little bit onto the exhaust. The idea being that this should make it look a bit more rusted than the tracks, because the tracks aren't meant to be super rusty but maybe this gets more rusty. I'm not too sure how this is going to turn out later but it's not going to hurt and it may just add a bit more interest to the exhaust. I painted the tool handles next using Vallejo model colour beige brown which I carefully brush onto the wooden bits, or the bits I'm assuming are wood. You can see that I didn't do this perfectly and some touch ups are going to be needed. I do keep saying it, but you can always fix mistakes later. I keep saying it because it's true. Next I highlight the wood. For this I used model colour cork brown. Of course you can use any woody colours that you like. Also there's bound to be somebody insisting that you always have to paint the tools the same colour as the vehicle, but in my opinion doing it this way looks a bit more interesting, and probably not surprising to anybody I'm more interested in things looking interesting than being super accurate. Another thing I've painted in probably inaccurate colours, oh my word what a terrible thing to do. I'm not sure if it's a stowage box or jacking blocks or something else, but I've decided to paint it with model colour mahogany brown, because why not? I'm being careful to not paint the little bracket things in the corners of this, they look like they should stay green. I pondered on highlights for this for a bit and in the end I decided on beige brown. I'm just lightening up the edges and corners of this thing to make it look like it's a bit worn there. Why not paint some metal tool bits, or things I think are metal tool bits anyway. Some of the parts here I definitely wasn't sure about, which really is normal for me. 
Anyway, I'm using the good old scale 75 black metal here because it's a really nice colour. It's not quite as dark as I want it to be right out of the bottle, but until I get something that is, this works quite nicely. I try to be a little bit more careful with the metallic paints than the other colours, because while you can fix mistakes, it does seem to take a little bit more to cover a metallic colour without it showing through. Not a huge issue, just something I've noticed, and it does save time not making mistakes, which you do by being careful. Also, I put a little black metal on this buckle looking thing here. Why not? I decided this strap looking thing here should be a different colour, so I painted it with Vallejo model colour cork brown. Should it be this colour? Who knows? Is it this colour anyway? Sure is. I then turned my attention to my Valentine's butt. Are you sure that's the right term? Yes. I painted the fuel flimsies with Hataka SCC number 2 khaki brown, which is from the same set as the base colours. I don't know how realistic an idea this is, but I figured doing them in this colour would make it look like they came from a different vehicle. Obviously one that's painted khaki brown. It seems like at least a semi-plausible story. Of course, the real reason is I just wanted to add a bit of a different colour to the model, though it isn't really all that different from the other browns. Still, it is different. I'm being careful not to paint the little bracket thing that holds these in place with the brown colour, and I think the result is good. And that was all the things I could think of to paint with the acrylics. Now it's time for washers. It's important to be clean! Well, yes, but I don't mean that kind of wash. I applied Army Paint a soft tone to the wooden tool handles, and this is undiluted straight out of the bottle. You can of course do this as you apply the various colours, but I do like to try and combine applications like this where I can, just to save a little bit of time. I also applied this wash to the box or whatever it is on the front right, and on the jerry cans because why not, it's not going to hurt anything. I follow this with army paint a dark tone on the metal tool parts, just to make them a bit darker, but still a little shiny. Next I diluted the dark tone just a little bit, around one part water to three parts dark tone, and I apply it to the rubber portions of the wheels, or tyres as you might call them. I'm also trying to get it onto the rims to help darken those down a bit. At the same time, I'm trying not to be too messy with it. You don't really want to just slap this stuff on and let it pool up. It'll leave weird looking tide marks as it dries. I also applied this around the caps on the fuel tins because, again, why not? It should make them look a little bit more used. Then once that was all dry, I applied some gloss varnish to the tracks and surrounding areas. I brushed this on, if I'd used the airbrush I would have just done the entire tank. The reason for the gloss is of course to protect the acrylic paints from the coming enamel effects. I applied MIG Productions track wash to the tracks. Please insert hilarious and witty comment about how it's surprising and weird to use track wash on tracks. Ha ha ha, we'll all say. Don't forget to apply this to the spare track links as well, if you've got them. Not everybody does, but you shouldn't leave them out if you do. I'm still trying to be pretty neat with this, but you can get away with a little bit of slop here. If you've applied the gloss varnish, it's quite easy to remove this from places you don't want it. Just take a clean brush with clean or at least relatively clean thinner. You just sort of wipe it off if you've put it somewhere you don't want it. This is one of the best parts of working with enamels, at least in my opinion. I also put this colour on the exhaust, but I wasn't really sure that I liked it. I added a little bit of MIG Productions standard rust effects, just sort of brushing a little bit of it on and mixing it with the track wash. Then I thought why not add some MIG light rust effects, which also kind of blended in with the two previous layers. I think this looks kind of effective, but it'll probably look a lot better when the matte varnish is on. I sprayed a coat of gloss varnish all over the model to prevent those enamels from being reactivated by the next ones. And then I used the ammo panel liner Dark Knight to, well, mostly be a panel liner I guess. I'm just applying this in any little gaps to add some darkness there and along various edges and in corners. In addition to adding a bit of darkness, it kind of makes things look a bit dirty as well, which is certainly not a bad thing. Tanks do tend to get dirty, even when they're clean. You'll probably notice at this point that I forgot to paint the turret machine gun. What a moron! It's not the end of the world, I just painted it black with Steinal Res Primer and gave it a very gentle dry brushing with Scale 75 black metal. Simple enough. 
maybe it's a good idea to pay attention to what you are doing. Though, in fairness, most of the painting was done on the hull of this model, so it's kind of easy to miss something on the turret. Oh well. It can be hard to tell when a model is really finished, but for now I've decided that this one is that. I mean, I wanted to get it done in time for Valentine's Day, otherwise what's the point really? And finished is a relative term anyway. It's totally okay to decide later that you're not finished after all, if you want to add some more weathering or paint something a different colour or anything really. Those kinds of decisions are completely up to you. But for now, a nice coat of ammo Lucky Matte Varnish has been applied, and the Rubicon Valentine tank in 28mm scale is now completed. I'm pretty happy with the result, and I think the Hataka colours are really nice. Like I said before, I'm not sure Valentine tanks were ever painted this way, but at the same time I really don't care. There are more colours in that Hataka paint set that I would like to try out, but those probably won't make an appearance for a while. I have actually used Hataka colours prior to painting this model. I've also got an Australian set of Redline airbrush colours, which were also rather nice. That model isn't even nearly done yet though, so let's just pretend that this is the first time I've used Hataka paint. It is the first time I've done so on video, so it's technically true? Anyway, I quite like it, and I certainly plan on picking up more of their paints in the future. The paints handle quite well, and they have a nice matte finish. Though I guess that's not really relevant when you're putting on gloss coats and washes and stuff, but it's still nice. Okay, so I had fun doing this. It was a little bit rushed maybe, but for obvious reasons I wanted to get this done by Valentine's Day. Those reasons being I'm very hilarious. Still, it's not too bad for a relatively quick paint job. I am a bit disappointed that I wasn't able to spray a heart on the turret neatly enough. Maybe I need practice, or maybe just to have more steady hands, or both. Why not both? That would be good. At any rate, the decals, at least the heart ones, get the message across that this is a nice Valentine's Day Valentine. I hope you spend your Valentine's Day appreciating the Valentine tank, which is what the day is intended for. There's a list of the paints I've used down in the description below if you're painting your own valentine and you want some ideas for colours, or for whatever reason you want to try and emulate what I've done here. Obviously you are free to use whatever colours you like on your own valentine, and if you have painted one and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly discord community and share some pictures? That would be most excellent. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. That's pretty much what it's for. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the bargain price of absolutely nothing. Or if you have the means and you want to help a herpet up up do herpet up up things, as well as seeing my videos a bit early, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.